Nintendo has never exactly been known as a proponent of feminist ideals. Based on their record, it's probably safe to assume most of the company's brainstorming sessions start with a very similar proposal. Hapless woman is captured by cunning man, needs heroic man to save her decidedly unheroic life. And even their heroic women hide behind masks. So, not a flattering portrayal of women, but you might think this debut starring role of the notoriously man-dependent Princess Peach could perhaps initiate some kind of change. Maybe, maybe this is Nintendo finally breaking from the Walt Disney Club for outdated female stereotypes, but no, this is pretend feminism, ladies and those who strive to maintain societal dominance. Yay, the woman is saving the day, and she's doing it with pink colors all over the place and flowers, because you know pink is the woman's color. And she's also saving the day in a much easier quest, because you know girls aren't as good at adventures as men. And of course, her greatest weapon is her emotions, because you know that girls... Well, you know. So, Super Princess Peach is far from a turning point in Nintendo's apparent views on women, but it is a wonderful platformer with a unique vibe among the games to which comparisons are so obvious. To set the stage, Mario and Luigi have been kidnapped by Bowser and taken to a kingdom far beyond that of mushrooms. Upon discovering this, Princess Peach embarks on a quest to rescue the plumbers in a fun reversal of roles steeped with nearly three decades of tradition. But Super Princess Peach is more than just a twist on classic Nintendo plot devices. The game feels modeled closely after Yoshi's Island, with big, beautiful worlds that have a vaguely similar aesthetic. And there are even end-of-level bonus rings to jump into, another cosmetic nod to Yoshi's groundbreaking Super Nintendo platformer. Now, in a lot of ways, Super Princess Peach plays just like you'd expect it to. This is a classically styled Nintendo platformer, so if you've played Yoshi's Island and even Super Mario Bros. 2, you'll feel right at home in this not-so-strange new world. The princess can hover in the air for a short period of time, a convention dating all the way back to her playable NES debut, but in this implementation, it feels a bit more akin to Yoshi's Flutter in the aforementioned Yoshi's Island, both in terms of its timing and its execution. So, long story short, it's very smooth and it feels great to play. So the platforming and the enemies are familiar, but where does Super Princess Peach break from its predecessors? Well, the game's biggest hook is Peach's emotions. The so-called Vibe Scepter has made the princess especially emotional, and unlike some women, she can actually control those impulses. So make Peach sad and she'll cry, make her happy and she'll float through the air. These emotions and their effects figure largely into the gameplay and level design, and they make Peach's outing feel distinct from those of the plumber and the dinosaur. Another big difference is that Peach can be powered up permanently. You can upgrade the princess with new abilities and increase the longevity of her vibe gauge, so there's a bit of depth here that you wouldn't find in other Nintendo platformers. Of course, that's somewhat offset by the game's severely low difficulty, but if you're a Nintendo fan, Super Princess Peach is still an easy recommendation. It plays like the classics you adore, but with an unexpected heroine who can laugh, cry, spontaneously combust, and most importantly, platform with the boys. 